Right. This is coming to um, our revision uh, series on thermal energy. And this is a tricky topic because there's not much you need to know, um, but there's a lot you have to apply. Essentially, all you need to know is about how hot um, objects become cooler and he how heat moves from one object to another. So let's just define those things first. What do I mean by hot? Well, if I had a body, an object, a body, and it is hotter than its environment, then what it means is it has a higher temperature than its environment. And so hot objects compared to cold objects, and that could mean even me in a room, I'm hotter than the room, so technically I'm hotter, give energy out. And they give out energy until they obtain the same temperature as the room that they're in, the environment they're in, thereby reaching equilibrium. So therefore, hot objects always give heat out to cold objects until equilibrium. In other words, the same temperature is achieved. So hot goes to cold. That's quite a fundamental idea. Good. Now, how does it go from hot to cold? Well, there are three methods of heat transfer. And they are, first of all, we talk about conduction. Um, and bearing in mind there, uh, with, uh, there are two methods of conduction that you need to be aware of. First one is how heat moves in solids. And then secondly, how heat moves in metals, which have a slightly different um, um, method in which the heat transfers. Those. The second one is convection. And then the third method of heat transfer is radiation. Okay, so essentially heat will move from hotter to colder objects via conduction, convection, or radiation. And when you think about any situation it might be, whether it's a thermos flask, whether it's you know the earth heating up in the middle of the day, whether it's a tin foil suit wrapped around a marathon runner, essentially these three methods of heat per transfer are being manipulated, being controlled somehow, to either keep something hot, keep something cooler, etc. etc. Now the way you need to uh, memorise this and which relates to which, is simply conduction always happens with solids. Convection always happens with liquids or gases. And radiation doesn't need matter. If you remember with radiation, it's actually electromagnetic radiation. And that radiation we de dealt with in waves, and that's our, um, that can travel through space without actually needing any medium, material, or matter to go through. Okay, let's look a little bit more closely at each of those in turn. First of all, we have conduction. And essentially, what happens is, because it's solid, I'll give you an example of this sort of rod. And at one end of the rod, we are applying heat. And so therefore, you will imagine that this end of the rod becomes hotter, and because it's colder with respect to this end, heat is going to transfer along the rod. Well, how does that happen? Well, first things first, because it's solid, all of these particles are fixed. So let's just say particles are fixed. That's point number one to bear in mind. And so therefore, the only way, that he, when you heat something up, what happens is it vibrates faster. Now that doesn't mean that it moves at all, it's just these particles start to vibrate more, quite sizably vibrate. Then what takes place is that they collide. with neighbouring. Oops, a little bit stuck on space there. Atoms. And so that causes a certain vibration in those neighbouring atoms, and so on, 
and so on. However, these vibrations get progressively smaller. Or, or if you leave it heating longer, then these vibrations get larger and larger and larger. And so therefore heat travels from one end to the other. Now that's with conduction. Now there are some things which conduct particularly well, which are metals. And there are other things which are bad conductors. So we go from the other extreme, which are uh, things like plastics. And interestingly, it's not that different to how electricity moves around. Good conductors are metal. Why is that? <clears throat> well, with metals, there's a certain specific thing we need to be aware of. And one of them is, first of all, we need to understand how a metallic bond is formed. Now, metallic bonds have these atoms, like we mentioned before, this lattice, as we call them. So these are the ions, and this is a mess, metallic bond. However, around there, you have electrons. These are called free electrons. And what happens is, actually, those... I mean, this is much more densely packed than this. But these electrons... We're describing metallic bonding as having a sea of electrons. And they're not fixed to anything. They're free to move, so we call them delocalized. It's an important term there, delocalized. So what happens is, if you apply heat at this end, as before, then those electrons actually start to move around the material. The metal, should I say. And in doing so, move the heat from one end to the other. So it's really important to call it, to talk about these free electrons. And those are free electrons enable metals to be good conductors. Okay, let's give some examples. If you had a um, a pan that you're using on the on a hob, <coughs> you would have a metal. Well, let's just draw this quickly. Here we go, pan. And you want heat onto the pan. Of course, you want to heat the water inside. Some water. So therefore, you would have a metal pan because you know that heat conducts very well through the metal. However, if you are holding onto this. And the last thing you want to do is burn your hands, so therefore you're looking for a solid that is not a good conductor, something like wood or plastic. So therefore heat is conducted into the water, but not along to your hand. So there's an example of it. Good, okay, let's look at the second method of heat transfer, number two, convection. Now I said convection was good in um, liquids or gases, so let's just take a look at that pan a little bit more, and let's um, imagine it's full of water, which is a liquid. So therefore, how is heat, if I heat in this corner, how is the heat able to be transferred? Well, we need to imagine, we need to consider, first of all, you have particles are free to move. And so therefore, a particle gets hot and moves around to a place where it's not hot and therefore transfers heat. So particles are free to move in liquids and gases. But why do they move? How, more specifically, what path do they, do they move in? Well, first of all, you must imagine that once you heat a particle, when it gets hotter, it expands. Okay, this is the first important point. Second one is if a particle expands, it becomes less dense. And objects that are less dense rise. So first point is it becomes hotter, so it expands. Then it becomes less dense because it occupies a bigger volume, and so it starts to rise. Let's, uh, let's draw that in. It starts to go up. Then it starts to cool, and therefore it condenses. But because it's being pushed aside by the other particles, it starts to move around. 
and then it starts to fall. So therefore it becomes more dense and therefore it starts to fall. Now the whole of this system and then obviously as the other particles come in to join it, it starts to move around again. And the whole of this system you can see is a current is set up and more specifically call it a convection current. But you need to be aware of those ideas. Um, now this can happen in air as well. You have, you know, if you have um, land and then water and this is being heated by the sun this time, the heat's coming in equally on all sides, then because the land heats up much quicker than the water, air starts to move up over the land, it gets pushed across, it starts to fall over the sea. Why does it fall over the sea? Well, it becomes cooler over the sea, condenses, becomes more dense and falls down. And therefore you get what's known as a sea breeze. So there's an example where um, it's, it's happening in gases, whereas this is happening in liquids. So don't be phased by the question. Think to yourself, first point is, think to yourself, what material am I using here? Is it solid, liquid or gas? And then, if it's a liquid or a gas, think, okay, I know that convection is possible here. And then you need to picture why, when it, you know, where the convection current is and explain which it is. Okay, let's look at number three, radiation. Okay, radiation is quite straightforward because any hot object, remember I talked about here that um, objects <coughs> move from, uh, uh, heat moves from hot to cold. So if an object is hotter than its environment, then it will always give out electromagnetic radiation. And more specifically, what type? Infrared radiation is the type that it often gives out if it's hotter. So any hot object is pushing out infrared radiation. So that would mean as well, you sitting where you are in your room, you are hotter than the room, and so therefore you're giving out infrared radiation. Now it very much depends upon the surface and the colour of the object as to how much radiation is being given off. So here are two examples, two extreme examples. Okay, we have one surface that is black and one surface which is white. We also have this surface, the black surface, which is matte, whereas the white surface is shiny. Now, in terms of um, how much radiation is first of all being absorbed, well, the black matte surface likes to absorb a lot of radiation, whereas the shiny white surface doesn't absorb much radiation. But also, as well, the black matte surface likes to give off a lot of radiation. So let's just think about that before I say give off a lot of radiation. If you're in a blazer, a dark blazer, in a summer's day, it's absorbing a lot of radiation and you get hotter because of it. However, similarly, that same blazer, that dark blazer, is giving off a lot of radiation. I mean, that has to be the case because if it were just absorbing radiation, giving off nothing, the blazer would keep heating up, heating up, heating up until the blazer melted. What happens is it does heat up, but when it gets to a higher temperature, it then starts radiating lots of energy and it hits an equilibrium. It's staying at the same temperature. The same that comes in is the same that's given out. Slightly hotter, however, than the white shiny object. The white shiny object, however, will give off radiation not as much because it's not as hot as this one. This is absorbed more, has become hotter, this is cooler, so it's not giving off as much. Okay, there is a scale, of course. We go from the colour black from one side, white to the other. And then the surface type makes a, an effect as well. Matte at one side, and then shiny at the other side. So you must be aware of those surface types and what they're doing. And then finally, I suppose, silvered surfaces 
if you have a silvered surface, will just simply reflect all radiation that strikes on it, like a mirror. Electromagnetic radiation is bounced off a mirror, that's why you see your reflection in, the, in a mirror, because it's an electromagnetic wave in the visible spectrum. It's the same with infrared. Infrared is reflected off a silver surface. So where I talked before about marathon marauders being wrapped up in those, we call them those space blankets, they're silvery, so if the body is this side of the space blanket, whatever it, because they're incredibly hot, the runners, after the running, they're giving off lots of radiation. That radiation is bounced back onto them rather than being lost, so it keeps them warm. Okay, so conduction, convection, and radiation. Now let's look at how you manipulate some of them to have certain effects. And the majority of manipulation occurs in trying to keep things warm. So the first thing is um, air pockets. Now, if you just had a, a cavity that's full of air, then heat can transfer through that cavity. Inside this cavity, it will transfer via convection. Um, from a hot place to a cold place. I mean, imagine if you like from a hot room through this air cavity to a colder place. Um, a hot room to the outside of the building. Or from you in the bed to outside the bed. Air is going convected through, and this is your duvet. Now, the way to stop that heat being transferred is to make air pockets. And you can do that by either making, you know, very spongy foam um, duvets, or you can put layers of clothing so there's air trapped in the layers. And what happens here is, if you have air pockets, then this prevents convection. Now, if it prevents convection, because obviously the air can't move, the air is trapped in here and it moves around in these circles rather than moving through, then the only thing left for it is conduction, i.e. air particles vibrating, bouncing into the next air particles, vibrating and so on and so forth. However, air pockets are very bad, very bad <coughs> conductors. So therefore, if you can't move through convection, you know it's a bad conductor. In effect, what that equals is good insulation. Good insulation. Okay, let's look. It's a classic example, but at a thermos flask. I'm going to draw a very bad thermos flask. But what you have inside a thermos flask is this double-walled container. So this is a... thermos flask. It has a double walled container with the liquid in here. <coughs> You're either trying to keep it hot or cold, it doesn't matter. Then you have your structure outside and you have your lid as well. Now there's some effects that thermos flask um, manipulates. One is that it's double walled. And though not a perfect vacuum, there is a less air in between there. Okay, so what does that do? Well, there's less particles. And if there are less particles, then the conduction and convection are both reduced. It, you know, the more the, um, I suppose the fewer particles, the more this effect is reduced. Okay, the second one is that the insides of these surfaces are silvered. Well, if they're silvered, then they reflect radiation. So therefore, that either keeps, it reduces again the heat loss. <coughs> 
So look here, we've got the conduction, the connection, and the radiation all manipulated and trying to be controlled with the thermos mask. If the inside is hot, then it prevents the heat from getting out. If the inside is cold, then it prevents the heat from getting in. So it's a really good way of keeping things cool. Once again, you need to first of all con consider what's taking place in each part of this, which heat transfer it makes reference to, and how it's being controlled. Okay, then. and then we'll finally do temperature scales. Now, when we talk about the temperature, we need to be quite careful and define it differently to heat. Temperature is the average kinetic energy of a particle. And what that means is, if you look at one particle only, it's how much it's vibrating. Just one particle. Heat is looking at the total energy of a system. Or lots of particles. So it matters if you have the ocean, let's say, as opposed to a cup of tea. These are distinctly different. Whereas, let's imagine, it's a bad example, but let's imagine you've got a cup of tea. The cup of tea could be at 50 degrees, let's say. And if you found a bit of ocean around a, I don't know, around a volcanic vent, that could be at 50 degrees. So they both might hold the same temperature around a vent and a cup of tea. The same temperature, because if you looked at one particle next to that, in that ocean part, it would be vibrating the same as one particle in this part. However, the whole ocean area around there holds so many more particles, it holds much more heat than the cup of tea would. Okay, now based on this idea of um, vibration, rather than having our scale that we are familiar with, zero degrees C, and then that travels up another famous point on there would be 100 degrees C, the boiling point of water, etc., etc., and carries on up. Wouldn't it make sense to start this point at the point in which there is no vibration? Because at no vibration, we are going to have a negative number, actually 273 degrees Celsius. But the Kelvin scale says, well, let's start that at zero Kelvin, and then let's move up. So therefore, zero degrees is 273 Kelvin, 100 degrees is 373 Kelvin, and so on. So it's a linear displacement. So simply, you have your temperature in degrees Celsius, and that equals 273, um, sorry, your temperature in Celsius plus 273 equals your temperature in Kelvin. So it's just a nice linear displacement. Okay, it's not much to learn, but it's a lot to apply, but bear in mind, conduction, conduction, radiation, and how they're manipulated. Okay, that's it.